All right, guys, good morning. I guess we're having some trouble with our video on the salamander. So I'm adding a new video just to help us be able to see what we're looking at. So again, we're looking at the signs of spring. And one of the things that I saw on um, Chronicle, which is a show that comes on after the news on Channel 9, um, it's just a show about things that are happening in New Hampshire. Um, one of the things that I saw that I wanted to share with you um, that was really going along with our theme, that signs of spring, is this video about salamanders and this what they call the um, salamander brigade. So I just thought I would share with you um, what it looks like, these salamanders that are crossing the road and another sign of spring. So let's look at it together. So again, not working. Students create effective writing that delivers results. Suggestions are provided. So Chronicle just comes on after the news. It's just a show about New Hampshire. Um, there are those keepers that we've been talking about. It's called Big Night. The myth that environmental educators tell is that after a long, snowy, cold winter, the snow melts, the ground thaws, and one day it starts raining. And, and the rain, rain continues, continues into the night, and, and all of the wood, wood frogs and spotted salamanders and, and, and spring keepers clamber up from the underground burrows where they spent the winter, and they, and they move across, across the landscape, landscape to their, their breeding pools in one, one big night. Brett, Brett Thielen is a believer in, in citizen science, science getting, getting data, data by connecting, connecting the general public to the natural, natural world. world. And, and this is so there's the salamander we're talking the about. Salamander crossing brigades. And the idea here is that we go up places where these amphibians need to cross, to cross roads, roads in order to make it to their breeding holes. And we train people in how to safely move the animals across the road and how to identify the species that they're seeing. And then we keep count. So just a quick note, notice they're wearing gloves. That is not a sanitary issue in terms of the coronavirus. Um, that is because um, amphibians breathe through their skin and are the, oil, the chemicals and the oils that we have in our skin can actually harm um, the, the, the salamander. So they're being just protective of the animal. Again, anytime we're interacting with nature, we never want to um, harm it. We always want to just be part of it. And if we can, you know, move them. The, the the idea with these people is that they're cross. These salamanders need to go from one side of the road to the other, right? Because that's where their breeding pools are, so they can lay their eggs. Um, but they have to cross this road that cars are there. Cars versus salamander, not a great chances in terms of the salamander winning. So these people are recognizing where the salamanders might need some assistance and getting them to that place where they can lay their eggs and without being harmed by a person driving a car. <laughs> been coordinating these brigades in the Monadnock region since 2007 and has trained 800 people, many of whom remain active each spring. Part of the interest and enthusiasm from the part of people, too, is we've been cooped up all winter. It's been cold, and we're just really waiting for spring. We don't know what that's like, right? Being cooped up all winter? Big signs of spring. We met up with Brett a few weeks before a highly anticipated big night. She brought us out to one of her crossings in Keene, where thousands of amphibians pound the pavement every spring. So, so this, this is our North Lincoln Street, Street crossing, crossing, and, and it's, it's a pretty, pretty narrow, narrow crossing. It runs for about a tenth of a mile across this, this road. road. It's a road. I mean, it's, there's, there's enough cars here to do a lot of damage to, to, to amphibians that are out. Back, Back in our office on the campus of Keene State, State College, yeah. Brett's small space, space is littered with educational materials, salamander crossing signs, all evidence that a lot goes into preparing for the day. See that sign because I did not squish a new one like on your daily commute that was funny where'd it go um so you know this woman basically what i love about this is she is a scientist but she is also just one person who has organized people who care the way she does and it's hopefully changing things better for the better that's, that's a very, very um fun, fun. 
commitment and also low commitment, commitment volunteer, volunteer options. options. This, this year, we wanted, wanted to tag, tag along, along to see what big night, night is really, really like. like. For, for weeks, weeks, we waited, waited for news that the that conditions, conditions were right for a migration. migration. And when, and when the, ground the ground thawed, the sun, sun went down, and the rain started, started we, we rushed to the to Lincoln Street, Street Crossing site in Keene to see some amphibians. Well, think about what's going on with our weather right now is that we know that we've had cool nights. Um, sort of warmer days, but cool nights. We know we're having rain. We know it's raining today. So it's definitely, you know, that kind of weather that they're seeing right now. It's chilly, but it is raining, raining and the, the ground is wet. wet so, so I am expecting to see some, some amphibians. Brett says, says one of the hardest parts, parts of her job of having hundreds, hundreds of volunteers waiting, waiting on her word before, before they, they grab their reflective vests and head out in the rain, rain for some salamander spotting. spotting. It's really, really hard, hard to look at, at that forecast and, 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 and know, know with certainty that a big night, night is coming. coming. So, so I'm always really nervous, really nervous about whether it will actually happen like, like I told, told everybody, everybody it would. Right, right. Volunteers didn't disappoint. They showed, showed up with their headlamps and flashlights, carefully patrolled the small strip of pavement, keeping an eye out for amphibians on the move. So, so what? what? Why, Why should you care? Care? So there's two parts to that. that. One is the role that amphibians play in our local ecosystem. And the other, other is the role that roadkill, or the, the, the toll that roadkill is taking on amphibian populations. So 90 to 95% of roadkill with the red vertebrates is actually reptiles and amphibians. Roads have a huge impact. So it's not just the few dead animals we're talking about. Thousands of dollars. Look at that salamander. That's such a cool shot. Jessica Bollum has been volunteering in the crossing game for four years. I don't think that was the future. I've always loved amphibians. There's something just really magical and special about their life cycles. There's something really amazing about coming out here on a spring night after a long winter in New Hampshire. Uh, uh, getting, getting to, to hold, hold these creatures, creatures with 95% of, of their lives underground, all the salamanders in the way. And you just, just don't get, get to see them, them normally. normally. And, and, oh, there's, there's one. one. Ah. So, so now, now we're going to cross them over, over the other side. side. And their species are good oil. Absolutely. And they're adorable. They have really great smiles. In, in our, our time, time on North, North Lincoln, Lincoln Street, Street, a few, a few tree, tree frogs, frogs and keepers were safely, safely chauffeured across, across the pavement. No, no it's just sitting right in my hand. hand. Well, well, I'm hugging my coat. coat. But, but the, the activity, activity was slow. slow. You think, think you know what all conditions are. are. Like tonight, tonight I would have thought 40 degrees, degrees of rain. Rain. Earlier, Earlier this season, 40 degrees of rain, rain, they would be out. But maybe because it's been warm. Maybe, Maybe 43, 43 degrees, degrees of the field feels, feels colder, colder than that? I, mean, I, yeah, I don't know. Look how cool that is. So these animals, what I love about this, I'm going to stop it here, is that the, this, these animals mostly hide, they, right? They're not animals that are typically in, um, out and about. They are hiding under rocks, logs, things that are sort of damp and dark. Um, so this is sort of a really great time to look at the salamander and to see what they're like. Look at their webbed feet. How many toes do they have? The yellow spots. Why do they have yellow spots? So many great questions. But again, just a really cool opportunity for you as, you know, thinking about being a scientist. I mean, the, you heard the people talking about their life cycle, what, you know, all about how they how we have an interaction with them on our in our environment you know we know that um you know them we've paved over their environment so they're not able to just go to their breeding ground the way they normally would so we caused um you know we interrupted right so these people are trying to fix that right they can't take the road out but they can try to assist those those animals um, or those amphibians in do, getting to where they need to go so there's less damage to them. You know, there's no need to have animals dying over man-made because of man-made interactions. So um, the idea around this is very simple about sort of correcting some of those 
things that we have caused a, a negative interaction on. So I will play the rest of this video, but certainly I think you've had a chance to see what it is that we're looking at. Um, again, these animals, she's talking about the conditions and how hard it is, and but that idea that it's spring, you don't know when that's going to happen, when the perfect condition happens, but it does always happen. We always get some type of conditions where it's the right temperature, the right humidity in the air, that these animals um, will come out and about, and this is like a big guess. And, um, you know, I'm wondering how do they know which places to, to go to? There has to be other places in New Hampshire that nobody is looking out for these animals on that train, on that, um, that crossing over. So what did they look for on either side of the road that told them this is the place that they're going to see um, amphibians crossing? Is it a pond? Does the pond have to be on both sides? Like what signs are they looking for to see that that would be a place for them to send this brigade to help these amphibians? So I'm wondering about that. Down, Down the road, road in West Westmoreland, Westmoreland, Westmoreland weather, weather conditions, conditions were the same, same but the salamanders were all over the road. Oh, that's crazy. I'm wondering, did you hear that? So he said just down the road in another location, this, there were there were salamanders crossing all over. But in that location that they were at, again, same night, just a little bit further down, they weren't. So did the salamanders move? Like, were they not in that location anymore? Were they just not feeling like that was the day? Like, what was there a predator in the area that maybe that made them say, don't go? Like, what made it be an idea? What, changed the conditions um because the weather was the same it was the same night it was the same time what made it okay for one sp spot a mile down the road versus another so interesting to see what what that would be and we may never know just that There's piece really of wondering an incredible natural phenomenon most, most of us don't ever see because are not you're listening to that wording, the natural phenomenon, things that are happening in nature that we're that we have no impact, but we can see them and they're amazing. The spotted salamanders, which is our kind of poster child for the salamander crossing brigades, they're they're, they're just, just incredible and beautiful, and beautiful salamanders. They're six to eight inches long. long. They have regular, regular spots, spots. And, and many, many people, people have never seen, seen one before. before. So did you hear that? So no sal no patterns are, are they're like fire fingerprints. They're none of them are the same. So the location of the spots on the salamanders are completely different. Um they run about six to eight inches. So I had a ruler here. Um so oh here's my tape measure. Um so six to eight inches, so um, you know, not super large, um, you know, from head to tail. So, you know, um, you know, if my arm is six to eight inches here. Um, you know, so that kind of gives you some idea. Um, they're, they're not big. They're not, they're or because they spend 95% of their lives underground. Them they really really cool. Cool. That's a vernal pool. We'll talk more about that too. To my great 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 He's one of the bigger ones, ones that I've got tonight. tonight. Mm -hmm. Brad, Brad encourages, encourages people, if you don't, don't have, have to drive on big night, night don't. don't. And, and to find a crossing in your local area, always practice safety. First, be, be visible, visible to traffic, traffic and, most and most of all, of all have, have fun. fun. That's super cool. Look, that's the paper we've been talking about. So again, it's just, I loved this video because A, it connected the fact that we were talking about spring, about signs of spring. It talked about our peepers. Um, it talked about the, um, and then it was just talking about that whole lifestyle and that whole interaction around people in the environment. So that's the video with that I wanted you to see. If you were not able to see it, here it is. Um, good luck. Have fun. Um, I think it's cool. Talk to you later.